beautiful people and welcome back to Art Club. So before we dive into this month's, let's recap um, what we talked about last month. So for February, we talked about Jean-Michel Basquiat and um, he's one of my favorite artists. I just really love his work. I think it's really colorful and dynamic and uh, really interesting. So I think at that time um, I had said I was going to be inspired by this um, picture he did of a dinosaur with like a crown on top. And so I was. And so what I made this month is this. Um, so I did draw a dinosaur. Now, I think the picture um, he originally had, I think, a T-Rex. And um, I'm not very good at drawing. So I just drew um, a long neck dinosaur, like an Apatosaurus or a Brontosaurus. Um, I did do a crown. Um, he did do a lot of these weird like faces and skulls, so I tried to include one, but it's kind of small. I kind of ran out of room um, and then just included a lot of text uh, because he did start off as a graffiti artist. And I included a passage of text here from um, one of my favorite books about dinosaurs, Dinotopia by James Gurney. And if you have not read it, I absolutely recommend it. Um, and my favorite dinosaur is actually one of the dinosaurs in that story. Um, it's a protoceratops, but I absolutely could not draw a protoceratops. So I just drew this one and I outlined it in white to kind of give it that like Basquiat look as well. It included the crown. Um, yeah, so this was my Basquiat project and I'm actually really proud of the way it turned out. So um, I want to see if you guys did anything and again like with the rules of art club, art club is for everybody and you can take the theme sort of as like a, like a loose suggestion but if even if you made something that has nothing to do with what we've talked about, would love to see it. Um, the whole point of this is just for us to be creative together and share our artwork kind of like a virtual show and tell type thing. And every month I will give you like an art history lesson just to kind of get your ideas flowing. Um, but even if you made something that has nothing to do with that, that's totally cool and we'd love to see it. And I will be happy to share it in uh, a video so that everybody can kind of get ideas together and we can all kind of appreciate our artwork until such time that we can do this in person, which um, I hope will be soon. And I would love to do this class uh, live and in person. I think that would be really fun. And as always, Art Club is open to everybody. It doesn't matter if you're super good at art or super not good at art. Um, it doesn't matter if you're young or old. Um, just come play with us. Come hang out and let's be creative together. So for March, I thought that we would talk because March 8th is International Women's Day. Um, I wanted to pick a female artist. And um, so the artist I picked this month is famous. Um, she became famous in her own right, but she became really famous because of her friendship with another famous woman. And so I thought, okay, this is a cool story to tell and, and a cool artist to talk about for a month that celebrates women. So I don't know if you all know who this lovely lady is. Have you ever seen her before? Maybe you've seen a, a picture or a painting of her. This is Marie Antoinette, and I have this little bust. Um, that's what you call like a sculpture where it's like from the neck and shoulders up. It's a bust. Um, so I have this bust of her, and I just think she's a really interesting person. And so I wanted to bring her as kind of a visual because um, the artist we're talking about is not Marie Antoinette, but it is a very close friend of hers. Um, so the artist we are going to talk about is named Elizabeth Vigée Lebrun or Madame Lebrun. So we are going to talk about her. So Madame Lebrun uh, was a famous portrait artist in France, and she was the same age as Marie Antoinette and kind of became famous for being her friend. So we're going to learn about her. She was born in April 16th in France in 1755. Her mother was a hairdresser and her father was an artist, but not a super successful one, but he, he made a little bit of money doing it. And um, Madame Lebrun loved art even as a child. Uh, she said of herself, I scrawled on everything at all seasons, my copy books, which are like notebooks in school and even those of my schoolmates had their margins crammed with tiny drawings of heads and profiles so how many of you guys like to doodle on your homework or your notebooks at school I, I, I'm a big doodler um, so is Madame Lebrun her father died when she was just 12 years old and she started to sell her paintings to make a little bit of money to help out her family so her father did teach her how to draw because he was an artist, but aside from that, she didn't have any formal training. She never really went to school, um, especially for art. It wasn't really a thing that women did. Um, she did get some advice from some of his artists, artist friends, like how to um, draw and, and 
pay attention to lines and color and shadow. But aside from that, she didn't really go to school for art. Um, she used to go to the Louvre Museum in Paris and try to copy the paintings that she saw there. And that is something that um, a lot of people do, just people who like art or people who study art is to copy famous drawings and to kind of practice that way. But by the age of 17, she was making good money selling portraits. And when she was 21, she married an art dealer. And that kind of put her in the way of famous art, um, people who loved art. You know, if, if her husband was selling art, then these people were people who loved art. And it kind of put her in their way so that her paintings started to be seen and people started to appreciate um, her artwork. So she had a really unique style. Um, it looks very classical to us when we see pictures that she's painted. They look like how we imagine classical paintings to look and you know, like the usual kind of paintings you would see in a museum. However, at the time, it was a big break in tradition. Um, she often encouraged her sitters to have like a really casual attitude to get comfortable. And um, she also was famous for being funny and a good conversationalist. Um, portrait painting took hours. Um, you, it was not like, you know, you go in and take a picture and then you can just like paint afterwards. Like there was no photography. Um, there were no pictures. So in order to have your portrait made, you would have to get all dressed up in like your finest clothes and you would have to sit very, 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 very still for days, sometimes weeks. And I mean, they would let you go home and take a break and sleep and stuff, but you would have to do it all again the next day. And so many people did not like having their pictures, uh, painted because it was such an uncomfortable process. But she became famous for kind of talking to her subjects while she painted them. She would make them laugh. She would even sing songs with them. So she became really famous because she would make her subjects feel very comfortable as opposed to just sitting there being quiet for weeks on end while she finished the picture. Um, she had many male patrons and sitters, but she's most famous for her paintings of herself and the queen Marie Antoinette. So at age 23, she received her first commission from the Empress Maria Theresa of Austria, who happened to be the mother of Marie Antoinette. And so um, the Empress Maria Theresa contacted her and said, I would like you to paint a picture of my daughter, because up until this point, uh, they had had many male portrait artists and a lot of other artists who tried to paint Marie Antoinette, and they just weren't happy with the way they turned out. Um, so they commissioned her to paint a portrait of the queen, Marie Antoinette. Um, she, she did a very flattering picture of her in all of her fine uh, gowns and her big, she, Marie Antoinette was like really famous for her big hair. And you can see that. I'm going to show you the picture in just a minute. Um, that really tall, high, um, very fancy hair that was worn at French court at that time. And the picture really impressed both Marie Antoinette and her mother. So they became friends from that time on. And in all, uh, Madame Lebrun painted two state portraits, two official portraits, and 30 other portraits of Marie Antoinette and her children over the next 10 years. So they kind of became friends and became, um, they became good friends and, and Madame Lebrun really enjoyed painting her. So we're gonna look at that first portrait, the one that kind of like uh, sealed the deal for Madame Lebrun and, and made Marie Antoinette and her mother happy with how it turned out. So this is the picture and you can see here, um, it shows Marie Antoinette with that big towering hair. She's got feathers in her hair. It looks like she's got jewelry in her hair too. She has on this big dress, lots and lots of layers. Um, they had these big hoop skirts that they called panniers, and that was meant to, to keep the dress really, really wide, um, and that was very, very fashionable at the time. She has on this royal corset. She has on um, the fabric is like white and gold, lots of lace, really expensive and very fancy looking. But you can see um, that Marie Antoinette looks, she's looking away, but her face is sort of like relaxed, and she is, um, the crown is here. I don't think it would fit on top of that hairdo. <laughs> and she's holding a rose. So a more casual kind of pose rather than, you know, standing in front of it or sitting on a throne or, or something like that. Um, also the attention to like detail on the fabrics. Um, I'm always amazed when I look at pictures, um, paintings in particular of fabric and clothing and the way that artists can make it look like it's moving or it's wrinkled in places. Um, I love that. And Madame Lebrun was very, very good at that. 
So while I was doing my research, um, the article said, although a woman artist who was the daughter of a hairdresser could not be a friend to the Queen of France, perhaps it did matter to the Queen that they were exactly the same age. And over the several years that Madame Le Brun painted her, they were also of childbearing age and both had children. I have a sense that this must have mattered in some way. Um, it would not have been common for a woman like Madame Le Brun, who was not noble, she was not... Um, we call it the aristocracy, which just means that you were born with a title. You were, um, you know, like a lord or a duke or um, a prince or a princess. And she was not. She was just a regular person. Her parents both worked. And so ordinarily, she would never have become friends with a queen. But she worked her way up um, studying and teaching herself how to paint portraits and eventually uh, did this one of Marie Antoinette and became famous and eventually became friends with the queen, which is pretty cool. So this picture was actually painted by another artist called Alexis Joseph Perignon in 1859. This was long after Marie Antoinette and long after Madame Le Brun, but the picture shows um, Madame Le Brun has dropped her paintbrushes and Marie Antoinette kneels down and picks them up for her. So it's kind of like a fantasy scene and a scene that this artist imagined of the two of them while, you know, her portrait was being taken, maybe uh, Madame Le Brun dropped the brushes and Marie Antoinette, being her friend, said, no, no, I'll, I'll get them for you. And so that's what we see here. So they were very famously good friends. Um, we don't know if this incident ever actually happened or if it was just imagined, but the fact that somebody painted it seems to suggest that they were really good friends um, in real life and that that's like a true thing that happened. So, in 1783, Marie Antoinette ordered the French Royal Academy of Painting and Sculpture to admit Madame Le Brun. Um, usually, only four women were allowed at a time, and Madame Le Brun would never have been allowed uh, because she was married to an art dealer rather than a member of the aristocracy. So, um, Marie Antoinette was like, no, this is my bestie, let her into to the school, and so she was able to go, which is pretty cool. Um, she was super successful over the next 10 years. In addition to painting Marie Antoinette, she started to get paid by other members of the nobility to paint their portraits as well. And between her admittance in 1784 to the breakout of the revolution five years later, she made over 50 paintings, which again doesn't seem like that's 10 paintings a year, but like these were big paintings and they took a really, really long time. So she was actually very prolific. She did a lot of work in a very short amount of time. So I mentioned the revolution. Um, all of this happened right around the time of the French Revolution, which was a really big deal in European history and certainly in French history. Um, basically, the revolution took place because of the big difference between the super, super rich and the super, super poor. And the people got upset that the wealthy were living um, these extravagant lifestyles. You know, we saw Marie Antoinette's big hair and her big fancy gown, and she had all of that stuff while the people of France were literally starving. They did not have any money. They couldn't um, even afford bread. And so the revolution took place when the people of France said, enough is enough. And they started to storm the castles. And it was a really... Um, scary, very violent episode in Fran French history. So like, I'm not going to go too much into that, but if you want to learn more about it, we certainly have books about it. Very interesting um, if you are into history at all. Um, but as the country started to go towards that revolution, being friends with Marie Antoinette was not a good thing anymore um, because the people were out they, they blamed the king and queen for the state of the country. So being Marie Antoinette's best friend wasn't a great thing for Madame Le Brun. Um, on October 5th, 1789, thousands of Parisians, people who lived in, in Paris, uh, mostly women, rioted at the castle of Versailles. And the following day, um, Marie Antoinette and her husband, the king, fled France. So they, they ran away. Um, she, Madame Le Brun, also fled France at that time. She left the same day that they did, and she disguised herself as a commoner with her daughter, and um, she left to go to Italy. Um, with only enough money to cover traveling expenses. So once she got to Italy, she uh, did exactly what she had always done, which was start making money by selling paintings. Uh, she quickly regained her status as a painter of the aristocratic and ruling families in Italy and beyond. Um, in other countries, it wasn't such a big deal that she was friends with Marie Antoinette. I think it became um, a good thing for her again, for her career, to say that she had painted the royal family. That's that's always sort of a good thing to have uh, in your back pocket. 
Although she never saw the queen again, um, she always remained devoted to Marie Antoinette and even said in her memoirs, the kindness she always bestowed on me has ever been one of my sweetest memories. So um, Marie Antoinette was very famously killed during the revolution. And so she never got to see Madame Lebrun again, but they did always, Madame Lebrun always thought very fondly of her throughout the rest of her life. So she spent the next few years in exile because, again, France was not a safe place to be at all. Um, there was a lot of upheaval and war and violence. So she traveled around Europe. Um, she started in Italy. She went to Austria. She even ended up in Russia at some point. Um, meanwhile, both her brother and her estranged husband were both in France, and they were put in prison just because of how close they were to her and how close she was to the queen. So for his own safety, um, her husband divorced her not in 1974, my mistake, um, and she would never remarry after that. When it was finally safe for her to return to Paris, it was 1802. It had been a long, long time. Um, I think 12 years she spent living away from her home, basically, because it wasn't safe to be there. Uh, she did return home to France, but found it was very, very different, and she had a really hard time adjusting. So she traveled a lot between Germany and England and France uh, during the last few years of her life. She died in 1842 at age 86 and enjoyed painting up until her death, which 86 is still like that's pretty old by our standards but back then it was super super old because they didn't have good medicine so she was quite elderly uh, back then when when she did finally pass away she survived one of the worst periods of her country's history and immortalized generations of europe's leaders through her work and um she, her talent was dismissed after her death. Nobody really thought that she was like that good or that important. It wasn't until the late 20th century, really like the 1980s, that people started to recognize her and bring her work back, um, give her work some attention and give her some attention for accomplishing what she did during her life. Um, because it wasn't an easy thing to do to be a woman and to bring yourself up from nothing to being best friends with the queen. Um, even by today's standards, that would be really, really hard to do, um, but she did it and she did an amazing job with it. So let's look at some of her other pictures. So she was famous for her portraits of Marie Antoinette, but she was also famous for her portraits of herself. So um, over here, you see the one with her and a straw hat from 1782. And you can see that she um, has her hair. It's not quite as tall as Marie Antoinette's, but it looks like she has it either powdered or a wig on, um, which was the style back then. And she has on her fancy pearl earrings, her pretty dress, and of course she's holding her artist's palette. Um, and has on this nice hat that was probably kind of expensive at that time, uh, but she looks really, really nice. And again, you can see the details on, you know, her face. She's smiling. Her mouth is open. Um, a lot of the times, at this time in history, people were painted with their mouths closed. You know, they didn't, they didn't smile. It wasn't like a, like a picture or a selfie, you know, like there was none of that. A lot of people had really bad teeth, so they just kept their mouths shut. Um, but her portraits often have her mouth open or in the case of the other picture right next to it, that's her and her daughter. And you can see both of them kind of have their mouths open, um, which again, we look at these and just think, oh, they look like classical pictures, but back then they would have been breaking the rules as far as like, oh, we're going to paint, you know, she's casual, she's there holding her artist palette, she's kind of leaning against something. Um, in the picture beside it, she's holding her daughter, you know, she's hugging her close and she's dressed very, very casually there. Uh, she has like a headband on and it's just very casual stuff that like would not have been done really at that time. And a couple other pictures of Marie Antoinette, her most famous client. Um, you see this picture here called Marie Antoinette with a rose. Again, a very, um, one of the more famous pictures of Marie Antoinette. And it's her in her, her court gown um, with the big hair. And, and a lot of that was um, a wig. Um, it was just, that's what was done at the time. It's what was fashionable. Um, today, I wore my little heart under my eye because that was another thing that was popular in the French court so did it just for you but you can see Marie Antoinette holding a rose she's kind of like holding it and she's got like a ribbon hanging off the rose um she has on this beautiful dress um her mouth is closed but she does look sort of like she's smiling a little bit with her mouth closed um and you can imagine that she was probably 
relieved to be having her picture done by her friend rather than being stuck in there with with somebody that she didn't really like. Um, Madame Lebrun probably made her feel more comfortable. And then a couple years later, um, we have this picture over here of Marie Antoinette with her children, um, which was painted on purpose to try and make her more likable um, because at this point people were starting to not like the royalty because of how rich they were and, and the way that they lived when the common people were struggling. So Madame Lebrun painted her with her children hoping that maybe it would make people more sympathetic to her, it may, might make people like her more. You can see that her um, her three children are here and also you notice there's a crib here that is empty and that is because um, during the time that the painting was being done, she actually lost her youngest child, um, died at 11 months old. So um, Madame Lebrun was sympathetic to that. I think being a mother, she, you know, she felt bad and, and wanted to um, like pay tribute to the baby without actually painting the baby. So that's why there's the empty crib there as well. Um, so those are some paintings by Madame Lebrun. So now it is your turn. So for this month, I thought that it would be fun since, you know, this was a whole story about a woman and her friendship with another woman and like women raising each other up. Let's do a picture or a project about a woman that we love or admire. And this could be your mom, your grandma, your teacher, your best friend, your sister. Um, it could be somebody from history. Maybe there's like a historical figure that you really like or a character from a book. Maybe you really have um, a character from a book that you like. Um, I love like Hermione Granger. But um, yeah, I mean, let's just do a, a, a project, any kind of project, and it could be, you know, a collage, a picture, a painting, a drawing of a woman that you love or admire, and we'll just kind of keep celebrating women this month. So I hope that you uh, learned something today. I hope that you are enjoying these videos, and as always, if you do make a project, either tag us or use the hashtag MPL Art Club, and I will go ahead and grab that, and we will share it in next month's video. Hope that you're all staying well, and we will see you soon. Bye.